Okay, this is part two of the intermediate value theorem. I just want to kind of go over an extension of the theorem because you're going to see this one used, or you're going to see it used this way uh, more often than in the last video. Uh, the question is, uh, is does f of x equal zero? Okay. In other words, can you, can you determine if there's a root? So they do have a, a different way of asking this, but can we determine if there is a root? Now, a root for us means f of x equals zero, like I have up here. Okay. So the root is actually this x value that gives me uh, a function value of zero. So come over here and take a look at this graph. We have a, and here's f of a, and here's b, and then there's f of b. So think of this as my y value. Does the intermediate value theorem guarantee me a y value of zero? Well, notice that zero is between f of a and f of b, right? f of b is negative, and f of a is positive. So if you can show that f of a and f of b have different signs, so different signs. Then you know that your graph has to cross the x-axis. That's where our root is. Because how are you going to go from a positive y value to a negative y value without crossing the x-axis where your root is? Now, that's why continuity was important. Because if your function is continuous, then you you're forced to cross the x-axis. If you're not continuous, that may not happen. All right, and that will be the I'll do that in a moment. Uh, but that's how we're, you typically use the intermediate value theorem, which is to prove that there is a root somewhere. Um, so let's take a look at a quick example. Does x equal sine x? Now remember that the intermediate value theorem, the first thing we need is a function. All right, so this is an equation. I, I do want a function. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtract the x over here, and I'm going to have the function sine x minus x. All right, so now what I want to know is does, to say x equals sine x, it's the same thing as saying does f of x equal zero, because if sine x minus x equals zero, it's the same thing as that. Okay, so I need an interval. Now I'm not given an interval. Sometimes you're fortunate enough and you're given an interval. I'm not. Um, so I'm going to have to make up one myself. And if you're not given one, you just, you just make one up. Um, try to keep it simple. So I'm going to do like negative two to two. There we go, negative two to two. So what I want is I want to I want call this A and I call that B. So what I want is f of negative two to have a different sign, or you know, the y value to have a different sign than f of positive two. So let's go ahead and see what happens. We have sine of negative two minus negative two. Make sure that you are in radians. And this gives me roughly a y value of 1.09 and a bunch of stuff. And then I'm going to plug in 2. And this is actually going to give me minus 1.09 and a bunch. Of stuff. So we can say since f of negative 2 is positive, greater than 0, and f of 2 is less than 0, and we also know that f of x is continuous, because again, that's important, then there has to exist, or there has to exist a C somewhere in A, B, so somewhere between negative two and two, such that F of C equals zero. 